Yeah. You guys started off the season like you know, you're rolling and rocking. You guys were yeah. warm with each other. And, like how's that relationship just growing throughout the season? I mean, you go from that to hopefully kind of trusting you towards the end and having to build back up that trust. How was that playing that out? I mean, so like, that's accurate. Um, I'm trying to think. They did the uh, <laughs> Well, um, I think we see in season two, you know, Ragnar punishes him. You know, the, the brothers know each other more than any other, other character, and he knows that Rollo wants to go and rage and fight. And, you know, I say it myself in season one, that was born, I was born to do, and the, and the, the one thing he can do, like, you know, it's like, it's like punishing a child. It's going, I'm going to go raid into England, and you're not going to come with me. And, and we see all that progress of Ragnar almost punishing him because the relationship is so scarred. And I was just saying, that's what it's like. It's the like scars do heal, but they're, yeah, they're, they're scars. And I think the relationship won't be the same. But we're now getting to a point in season three where the brothers you know, are back together. And there's some things that they're going to be forced to, to, to compromise on and to, and, to, and to work together on for the greater good of Canada. Was it difficult to get into the writer's decision that your character betrays him? Was it difficult to get into the, the writer's decision to write it that you uh, can fight for board? Yeah, well, Michael, we, we knew it was going to happen. Michael kind of talked to me about it before, and the lead up to the end of season one, yeah. we knew what was going to play out yeah. in season two. Um, but I think yeah, that's what I find fascinating is that Rollo decides that he thinks that um, he's going to trade in everything to be king for a day. Yeah. And it doesn't actually work out how he, you know, how, how, how he thought it would feel. And the best line for me in, in season two is when he turns and says, "I stepped out of your, your shadow, and there was no sunlight, no sunlight at all." And that, I think that's the, the, that's the point where Rollo realizes that the one thing that, you know, that, he, that he loved, he didn't realize how much he loved his brother until until he wasn't there anymore. <laughs> and it's what our show's about, though. I mean, our show is about family. It's about you know, we've all got brothers, we've all got mothers, we've all got fathers, we've got siblings. And, 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 Nothing really else compares to the family. Oh, Bennett Brothers. But all I can say is that as much as he's he's on Ragnar's side now, there's still one thing that's niggling away at him, which is that ambition. And that ambition's never going to go away, because as a Viking in society, your name means everything to you. So he's toing and froing between going, is, is, this it? is this all my life is now? My life is to just be second fiddle to my brother and worship the ground he stands on and just do whatever he says and we'll do this together as brothers and as lost brocks. But there's still something just gnawing away at the inside of him, which is, is there more? Because I'd be, you know, can you, can, can you find another way of doing it? Well, maybe it's not to do with betraying Ragnar, but he's got to find something to fulfill what he believes is inside. How does Siggy figure into that? Does she kind of... Um you know, spark the ambition. <laughs> well, Siggy's always been there. I think Rollo's never realised how much Siggy's done for him behind the scenes, but the big crux for that was that she, she sleeps with King Horry. Out of yeah, love. Out of love. She, she oh, yeah. <laughs> and says, I did it for you, Rollo. But anyone would say, I mean, any... <laughs> Can you really ever really kind of deal with that information? Can, can you really have a, a, a proper relationship with someone who's saying that they're sleeping around, but they're doing it for you? <laughs> so it is very much a marriage of convenience, but it's, it's tempestuous. My new favourite word. Um, we just saw our Donald down in London. Yeah. He's here for a Oh, yeah. I've never met Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's ahead of, for Ragnar in season three? Like, what kind of king is he going to be? Um, How is he dealing with his family? Well, the first thing starts off with actually um, all the uh, the, the uh, trouble that power causes. You know, I think throughout this year, you really it comes to light how hard it is to be a leader and uh, all the sacrifices you have to make and all that sort of stuff. And, um, which I'm excited about this year, we go to Paris. Last year we got caught up with so much um, family drama in Kattegat. And now we just... So much drama where Ragnar and the boys, we didn't get to uh, explore like we wanted to. You know what I mean? We set, we set the farms up in England this year. And then, um, you know, then we're like, what, what do we want to do next? And uh, Ragnar's very, um, very curious character. You know, he wants to see what else is it out there. So he gets back to season one where he just wanted to say or something. You know, so we do that at the end of the year. I'm ready to scrap stuff. We've got to hurry. Does attacking Paris show his strengths in a better light than his home life? So, yeah. 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 He struggles at home. He's not the best. With, uh, 
He has women issues a lot right now. I asked the other two this. Uh, when you're working uh, for the History Channel, how much more demanding is it when you have less probably creative license and you have to be more historically accurate in everything that you do? Well, it looks like a lot of license. Huh? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more freeing, if anything, because everyone knows the beginning and the end of history, but it's how it plays out. And that, therefore, it gives Michael quite a lot to play with. You know. You know the characters, yeah, and you can hear you can you, you can know how some some of these characters end up. All you have to do is pick up a history book and and, and, and you can read about Ragnar, Rollo, Lagatha. But it's the bits in between. It's getting from A to Z, and and that's what Michael's job is: is to create a, you know BCD all, all the way and make it make it exciting and, and fresh. Because no one really wants to be bogged down by you know stuff that everyone's read before. Yeah. I think. The history of if anything gives us more. The channel itself gives us more creative license. Um, but our, you know, obviously our budget is not a filmic budget, and I think what we produce with the limited kind of money we have is, is, is amazing. I mean, it's impressive. There should have been a lot more Emmy nominations. I... Well, we, we, got, we got an important one for us. We got um, visual effects. Yeah. Yeah. Julian Parry, who's our visual effects supervisor, yeah. is incredible. And, and what, what, the reason why I think it's incredible is you don't actually realize he's done anything. Yeah. Because it's, it's all about supporting the visual effects. It's about creating backdrops, map painting, creating mountains that aren't there, snow and deer, you know, running across a scene, and it, it all looks real. And it's so viscous and, and visceral and and and. and Jeez, you're coming up with your good words. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all thanks to him. And, I don't, and the reason I'm talking about now is because he's the he's the last person to take any credit for it, and, and he's now the one that's been nominated for an Emmy. And I'm so hoping he wins it because it should be about that. It shouldn't be about seeing big dragons and things like that and go, oh wow, it's a visual effect. Yeah. You shouldn't even know there's visual effects in the show. And Actually, I think one of the actors did not know. Yeah. Not pointing out here. They were like, oh, I didn't know there were visual effects. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest compliment to give someone like you. No, Billy Powell is brilliant. He's English, but he's brilliant. So tell us about uh, any new characters, anyone that you love or you love to kill? We haven't actually, I haven't worked with we're in England and they're back in, uh, in uh, Scandinavia. Yeah. We actually haven't worked with men or a couple of people are coming yeah. in this next episode. Yeah, yeah we're, we're actually sorry. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and do you know what? We killed a lot of them this season as well. Yeah. <laughs> actually, you, men you. you mentioned in the panel that you guys just said goodbye to your cast members, and it was really, it was really emotional. Yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, when, when, when it comes time to say goodbye to someone, like, do you guys have a ritual you go through? Well, that's the thing. It's like you say, is there a character you'd love to kill? And I can say yes, but <laughs> the cat, the actor that plays that character, that's why I can't answer it because uh, you know, we're all a big kind of unit now. And, and that would be almost feels kind of really horrible to kind of say out loud. It's like, yeah, I don't want to, of course I want to kill that character to the, the story, but I don't want to lose that actor from the show. And we did. We we, we lost a guy on, on the, the, you know, the day before we flew out. And it's just a, a, a token to how how much they're loved by the, the send off we all gave you. So how are the pranks on the set? I hear some people like them more than others. I've been pretty quiet this year actually. I've got a good one coming though. There's going to be a speech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving up for the day. <laughs> how great is it to be able to grow a beard and grow your hair long or do whatever you want with it and nobody really says anything about it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> He's lost his hair now though. I don't oh. have much hair but uh, beards are good. The, beard's oh, good. the hair yeah, extensions yeah. is a, is a, is a mess. Really yeah, is. that's probably not as fun. The glue in the hair, but uh, nine hours of sitting in the chair and having the glue in the hair, and then yeah, never being able to come do anything with it. 